Hello and welcome to another episode of Node School. In this episode we're looking at the texture coordinates and mapping nodes and we'll be looking more into procedural textures. Do make sure you've had a look at the other tutorials from Node School and this is all part of a much bigger course on gabbit.co.uk where you can go from beginner right through to advanced levels. And do remember the Discord server, if you get stuck there's lots of helpful people on there and I'd like to take the opportunity to thank those people, especially those that are really heavily involved in the admin and so on. So thanks very much to them. So as usual I'm going to subdivide my cube with control 4 to give it 4 subdivisions and set it to smooth shading in my tool panel. And I have the screencast keys down here if you need to see what I'm pressing. I'm going to grab that in the Z1 to move it above a plane I'm going to add now with shift A mesh plane and scale that up. I'm just going to move the ball down a bit because the subdivision surface has changed its shape. Let's bring this up now and click on the node editor. That should be nothing new and I'm going to go into cycles and use nodes if you haven't got the nodes there. What I'm also going to do just to make life easier is pull out a window here, take the tool panel off with T, have this on solid mode and this on rendered mode. Then I can easily select objects without having to try and select them in here. So with my subdivided cube selected or ball selected I'm going to press shift S over my node. Remember you have to have the node wrangler to allow that to happen and then go to the principal shader. So shift S switches shaders. If not you can go to add down here or you can press shift A to add. If you need to install the node wrangler, file, use preferences, add-ons, type in node wrangler and tick that. And it comes with Blender so you don't have to download anything. So now if I press control T on this with the node wrangler installed I get my texture coordinates, mapping and an image texture. And because there's no image texture loaded, it gives you this sort of purpley pink. So if ever you see purple and pink in your scene and you don't want it there, or you haven't put it there yourself, that's because you haven't loaded a texture in. So let's just put a random image texture in here for now. I'll choose these bricks and nothing shows up. Now for a moment, think why that is. That's because I haven't unwrapped it. And we can see from our texture coordinates that it's looking for a UV map. There isn't one, so this is not working and we're not seeing the texture. So UV map is the default and if you've unwrapped your object that's what you'll use. Now if I go to object and pull that in, it has projected the image onto the object and you can sort of see it's projecting it from the top and pushing right through the object and we're getting these strange things on the side here. Now the only one I really want to talk about is object. The others aren't particularly useful as a beginner. If object's not working particularly well then choose generated which looks very similar as it's projecting from the top but there are subtle differences generally speaking object will give you better results if that doesn't work then choose generated there's a fair bit of complexity around that which you can look up for yourself if you're really interested but as a beginner just know that using object will put the texture on for you but it's not particularly great so it doesn't work that well for image textures and if I change this texture with Shift S for switch texture and I change it to the brick texture for example at the top here you can see it does a similar thing let's change it to the checker texture now that's slightly different so let's press Shift S again and see what the options are now many of these shaders will work very well with just the object input let's try a different one Shift S texture and let's try the magic texture and you can see that's fairly evenly distributed around my ball. I'm just going to go to the world tab and put the brightness up a touch. So you can start to see the usefulness of this texture coordinates combined with some procedural textures. What we can also do is change the scale of this in different axes. So let's change them all to 2 and what you can do is click and drag over them all and click 2 and it will change them all at the same time and it's scaled them up. We can rotate so it's not always the case that you need to unwrap your object. You can use the texture coordinates to map the textures onto your objects. So let's take a closer look at some procedural textures. I'm going to change this one to the noise and this is a commonly used shader and a lot of the time you only want to use the black and the white and you can go from the factor if you want to do that rather than the color. With the noise texture I can change the scale. So I've got a sort of moon looking thing there. The detail and you can see what you, that does for yourself and the distortion. So you can get some interesting effects with these sliders. So let's move these over slightly. 
But what if I wanted to make this more contrasty? Have a think and try and remember that from the last session. What I'd need is a color ramp in here. So it goes into the noise texture, the color ramp boosts the blacks or the whites or depending on what you do with your ramp and then brings it into your shader. So let's do that now. Shift A, Converter, Color Ramp. Let's bring that in there. And now if I want the blacks more pronounced, I can push that up and the whites more pronounced, I can push that up. And we've got some quite nice effects there. How about mixing two procedural textures together? Let's do that. Shift A, Texture, and we'll go for the Ferro Noir. Now if you have Node Wrangler installed, you can right click with Alt and mix the two shaders together. Push that across. And there's my mix shader. I'll just maximize that with that little arrow there. And at the moment it's half and half and I can push, there's the Ferro Noir and all the way back is the top one which is the noise. So we can start blending the two together to create other effects. Notice I didn't mix these two together. I mixed the result after the color ramp with the Ferro Noir into the mix shader. We could even have a color ramp coming from the Ferro Noir here as well. Let's zoom out just a touch and move these out and have a bit of fun by putting these into the normal map with a bump node. Shift A, Vector Bump. And we can bring the color into the height information and the normal into the normal. You can as well control right click. You can as well control right click to hook these things up if you want to be a bit quicker. Let's bring the distance up slightly and we can see the effects of that bump. So what I want to do now is talk about this factor. At the moment it's just a slider and we can go to the top or the bottom texture through sliding and of course we can change the blend type. But you can see there's a factor option and it's got an input and that means it will take the information coming in from a black and white mask like a color ramp or similar and that will take the light information and give us the bottom one and dark information and give us the top one. So I'll explain that by adding an emission shader, shift A, shader, emission, and then mixing these two together with Alt, right click and drag. So I've now got a mix shader mixing these two together. And of course I can go to the emission or I can go to the principled shader and that's what it looks like without the emission. So if I want these peaks to be emissive, let's say with a blue light like this, I will need to plug into the factor and the white bits will show the emission and the dark bits will show the principal shader. So I can go straight from here. If I just control shift to show you what that looks like on its own. So that's what we're seeing without the principal shader's influence. If I plug that into the factor of the mix shader, those light bits will become emissive and the dark bits will be from the principal shader. So I plug that in, control shift click, and there we go. I'll increase the strength of my emission. You can see the results, which looks quite interesting at the moment. I can also, which is starting to get confusing because you can see where you get all these funny node wires and spaghetti-like node trees, but I can create a color ramp in here to control that as well. So if I just duplicate this one with Shift D and drag it over these, you can see it's tucked in there. I'll tidy this up just a touch. So from my mix shader, I'm going into my principal shader, I'm going into my bump, but I'm also going into the factor and controlling this emission and principal shader. So you can see the emission there looking rather odd. Let's actually control shift to see what this color ramp is doing. The dark bits are the principal shader, the light bits are the emission. And what I want to do just for fun is bring up the blacks and just have a tiny bit of emission right on the very edges like that. So now when I click on the mix shader with control shift, you can see there's a tiny bit of light coming through. Let's up the strength of that as well. And you can start to see how you could maybe create something like lava or something interesting like that breaking through your rock. So there's a few things to think about there. There's the texture coordinates for projecting onto your object. They work well with certain procedural textures. Then we've reminded ourselves of things like the mix shader and the color ramp but we've also introduced the factor. So you can see that my finished result here is slightly different. So as a quick challenge, see if you can get to the same or similar result to me. So that's level three, it's getting a bit more complicated now. Try and practice these where you can. The more you use them, the more it will make sense and the more you'll be able to pick up in the next episode. Do comment and let me know how things are going. 
whether you're keeping up with the pace, whether I'm going too fast, or any other issues you might have. Also, you can head over to the Discord server and make sure you check out my website. Thanks for watching.